I do think that there's a demand for crazy on the internet. Listen, women are getting pregnant every day in America. Build back better, blah, blah, blah. They said, you have no authority, you're not the president. The president said, I said, call him. No, screw your freedom. They're a bunch of dumb shits. No offense. Don't hate the media. They come to me. Talk about manufacturing reality. To find out more, fuck around. It's my mic on. All right, I remembered to turn my mic on. Awesome. Welcome back. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to your Liberty Radio and welcome back to another Friday night session of Open Lines. I am the Drizzle. Today is March 8th, 2024, and we are together again on a Friday night here in COVID land. And once again, it is your chance to be a part of Liberty Radio history as we go out to all the corners of the globe as well as the flat earth. We hit them both, folks. Uh, We hit both universes uh, and every single square inch that we possibly can. So call in and uh, let us know what is on your mind tonight. So how we do it is we set up a Zoom call. The link to that Zoom call is in the Liberty Radio Telegram channel. The link to the Liberty Radio Telegram channel, which is public, so you could literally just search GTW Liberty Radio and you would probably find the channel. But we go the extra mile, right? We put the link down in the description. We make it easy for you. You click on that. It, it should be the last thing posted in the channel. It's right there waiting for you. You go ahead and jump in and uh, we start talking about whatever's on your mind. You don't even have to turn on the camera if uh, you're of the shy persuasion, uh, which I was at one point in my life. Believe it or not, most people will not believe it. Uh, But you will need uh, to turn on your microphone because otherwise we can't hear you. And uh, that makes it difficult to have a conversation. Looks like the stream may be encountering some issues. Uh, If so, hopefully they're going to be uh, auto-magically taken care of here in just a few moments. I think think the stream burp has passed. A little internet gas never hurt anybody and uh, it's kind of normal or the end of the week in COVID land, if you ask me. But that's how we do it, folks. That's what Open Lines is. It's uh, our chance to get together and uh, talk about whatever you want to talk about. There are no restrictions. Uh, There there literally, there's no rules. We have no rules for Open Lines. So it's it's whatever you want to do. Uh, But first up tonight... What's going on, Rob? Rob's going to check in soon. Uh, he just checked in in the live stream chat. For those of you, again, scoring at home. So I was running through all of uh, all my normal stuff today. Well, not, not normal because, again, wasn't prepping for a show tomorrow night because we're not going to be on the air tomorrow night. Again, I don't know how many times I have to tell people I'm still going to get emails. But I was, I was doing my stuff, and uh, I had to go and check the weather. And I stumbled upon uh, this little, I don't know, what do they call them, like explainer videos or something that had been put together by the Weather Channel. And uh, this is kind of interesting. Let's see. Let's check this out. So this is about Hurricane Otis, right? 
200 mile an hour, 205 mile an hour gust, it, which is funny because I can tell you that down there in Acapulco, they, they actually use the metric system. So uh, it's interesting that Weather Channel chose Imperial, but of course it's, it's coming to us Texicans. So that's probably why. Uh, but uh, check this out. So this is uh, some of the damage that was caused by Hurricane Otis, uh, which of course now less than six months later is uh, being spun for a particular narrative. <laughs> Right there. Uh, these buildings, uh, these high rises that you see here that were damaged by Hurricane Otis, uh, these were the high rises that were directly behind the gated community that I lived in before I left Acapulco. I know this because I used to look out my windows and see them pretty much any time I was looking west out my windows because this building right here that has a slight curvature is a very distinctive building. I know exactly where that building is in Acapulco because I used to live behind it. And this is what it looks like now. All right. I see we have a caller. Uh, that is, I, I just, I don't know. Words fail me, folks. Words absolutely fail me. Because again, I know directly behind those buildings was where my apartment building was. Like quarter mile, maybe. Maybe. Absolutely astounding. What do you think, Yona? Well, I'm going to say a quarter mile. Hmm. Let's do some converting here. It's 5,280 feet in a mile. So a quarter mile is going to be 1,320 feet, which is going to be, we're talking about 420 meters. Smoke more of the weeds. There you go. See how that works, folks? Did you follow the math? Follow along with the owner at home if you need. Use your whiteboard, um, Katie Porter, if you need to. Looks like you're going to have more time on your hands, fish. Yeah. Anyway. I mean, it was, it was not, not very far away from, wow. Because I've seen, I've seen that building when it doesn't look like that, right? When it's got like the full glass fronting it. I mean, it's, it's an impressive piece of architecture. The thing about it, though, when they try to characterize the barometric pressure drop, uh, which is the one of the primary metrics for measuring the intensification of a of a storm, because you know that's you know how low is the pressure at the center, you know the eye of the hurricane, so to speak. Um, and what's normally characterized as rapid intensification is a process that is typically about 72 hours and in this case mm. we're talking about something that happened in about seven hours right. so i'm going to say this was turbo intensification anyway back to you Chris. yeah well it just turbo. reinforces the fact that i made the right decision right like, because great spirit protects you, Drizzle. Uh, great spirit protects something. you. Great spirit is real. Ask Charlie Brown. 
Yeah. Great pumpkin knows great spirit. <laughs> uh, it blows me away. I just, I watched that earlier today and, you know, my jaw was literally on the floor. I was like, oh my God, I know that building. I mean, I've, I've Think about recognized that, a lot of the footage that I've seen, but I was like, no, I lived right there. The great spirit spared the life of Drizzle before the great buildings were shredded up. In the same way that the great spirit protected the life of MC Rich G, a.k.a. Richard Grove. Yeah. Before those buildings were shredded up. See what I, I mean, think. we'll we'll see. Uh, we'll see. History is watching, Yona. Uh, history will determine if if that analogy is correct. You know, maybe that turbo intensification Hurricane Otis was a sign from God signaling to us that a Jewish woman needs to be president of Mexico. I it could have been. It very well could have been. What's on Step your aside, mind? Amplo. Yeah. What's on Hi. your mind tonight, Rob? Uh oh. Can't hear you, buddy. It's a good thing I can read lips. Mm. <laughs> uh, he's figuring it out. All right. Oh, he's got that red thing on his uh, microphone. That's probably what it is. <laughs> uh, well, what's on your mind, Yona? While Rob's figuring out his microphone uh. thingy. Really getting baked right now. Yeah, uh, I I was doing the uh, T lab there. I just did about two hours of T lab. I guess <laughs> maybe an hour. Wow. I don't know how That's long. Some stamina. Was. You know, just uh, anytime you talk about Israel anymore, it's just pretty much uh, a debunk festival. Um, and uh, I heard enough. I mean, at this point, you know, as soon as I hear in a report, well, today Israel said, yeah, okay, I already tuned out. Already tuned. Yeah. It, it, Israel said what? More lies? Come on. Right. Well, no, it's anyway. called policy. It's policy. Uh, it's, it's their policy so, to uh, kill every Palestinian. Well, you know. But that's it, not it's genocide. Because uh, today is March the 8th, uh, which is. Uh, apparently International Women's Day, in addition to being my ninth wedding anniversary. What, what is so, a woman, Yona? I mean, happy come on. How, how can we um, even celebrate okay. this holiday? Seriously, now. None of us are biologists. Um, well, let's see. Uh, Yona can define woman in two syllables. Um, and I have a justification for it. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, almost like a T-Lab citation. You know what I'm saying? All right. Um, and, and that would be uh, women, pussy, cuz moist, check and mate. <laughs> but you got to weigh the pros with the cons. Because a lot of times... That comes with a, a side order of crazy. Oh, usually. <laughs> I think crazy is part of the genetic structure of the um, the female. Can we still say female? Are we still allowed uh, to use that word? I Are they going to break that... down my door and throw me in a cage because I say the word female? I believe that death to tyrants, uh, deathy refers to them as women. Women. Okay. W i m m i n. No, those are women. That's different. That's different. That's not you know, female. It, he is. He is up in Canada, so you know, it, it's a different culture. Sometimes I'm not quite sure what he's talking about. Right. Such a hoser. All right, Rob, take two. Are you talking? Uh, his lips are moving. Are they? I can't, I can't hear a word he's saying. 
Well, we've got Rob on the um, visual there. And so, can you make my box a little bit smaller so I can do the American Sign Language for Rob there? No, no, we don't have that kind uh, of budget. Oh. Uh, Not even. Oh. Uh, the clown show. I can't see. Oh, oh there he cup. is. We have audio. Third time's a charm. Worthless uh, ad set, apparently. Yeah. So, uh, how do you guys feel about our messed up president getting up on stage and uh, talking a mile a minute in the most coherent speech I've seen in years? Oh, most coherent anything from Joe Biden, like, yeah, in, in quite a number of years. That was surprising. I mean, I give the old man his credit or whatever version of him they threw out there for the... Uh, grand debate with his big freaking ball sack uh, chin. Did you notice that one of his chin horns, the one on the right, was out further than the left? They couldn't even, like... I mean, it's like a gas mask. When you put it on, you gotta clear it. You gotta, you know, make sure it's fully sealed to the face. I mean, to be honest, I heard in the other room, I wasn't uh, in the room watching him, but... I just heard it. I, I was thinking my YouTube must have been on like one and a half speed because he was definitely delivering shit a little more. Well, he was jacked up. Yeah. Now, is it I could just tell that. me? It, surely it's not just the Yonan. Because like, um, for some reason, um, smoking more of the weeds, my sixth YouTube handle now, <laughs> has, has, has been banned and unbanned fucking twice i've already talked about it the other time, but um <laughs> it makes no sense but uh so i'm able to go on youtube on my laptops and my cell phone but my pc still says that i'm banned it makes no sense but That's but weird. anyways i i love me some fuckeries um so i did when see I go that, on that we've been now literally every other fucking ad that comes on is Joe fucking Biden asking me to donate to the Biden 2024 campaign? Oh, what really? Because I've been getting the Trump ads. Like, oh, can you find it in your heart to just just send us five or ten, maybe twenty five dollars? You know, if that's all you can spare. You know, wow. Well, well, the good news is Trump all my other my ads money. are in Spanish. Yeah, you know, I have defeated the algorithm so far. All my other ads are in Spanish and. Some of the Joe Biden ads are well, in here, Spanish here. because they think that Yona is a Mexican, Rob. Well, here, here, here's the dumb fuck shit anyway. Like, really? Your ads are going to influence anybody to vote either way in this clusterfuck. Um, I think most people know it's fake. But if they don't, like if they're not that little kid in the uh, little plastic car in the backseat trying to drive and they think that no, Their the, vote is like going to get him anywhere. No, we're being fed this stuff on purpose to trigger us. It's the humiliation ritual. Well, it's I mean, it's how social media works. Number one, like social media is your own personal uh, digital Skinner box, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's it's all to stimulate all the different responses in you psychologically and train you in a specific direction. Most people don't want to believe that, but it's true. Well, you know, conformity is the best thing. Doesn't matter what you think. Not even just conformity. If if they can hijack your behavior and essentially get get you to do whatever they want, they don't have to control you any other way cuz you think you're you're behaving of your own free will. It's the silent prison that they, uh, well, you know, to speak to what Drizzle's describing here, Rob, um, you know, I would say like, let, let's just zero in on something specific like censorship, censoring speech in day to day conversations in the United States of America. I would say that most people that are, um, how would they phrase it with our English language? careful about what they say pick and choose their conversations and topics you know 
don't talk about God or religion or politics or, you know, um, uh, that most censorship that continues to take place and more and more every day is not like, you know, you literally got um, Agent Smith right there in your face, Mr. Anderson. It's not like the government's in the room with you, although they actually are if you have a cell phone. But nonetheless, um, or even a, a Wi-Fi releasing people that, that that that's how conformity translates into censorship because they're like, well, I don't want to lose my job, and you know, I don't want to piss off my boss, or I don't want to say the wrong thing, or I don't want to do the wrong thing. Hey, buddy, I, I'm just trying to go along to get along. Okay, it's you a closed loop. It uh, <laughs> it doesn't lead anywhere. Yeah. Uh, it's not supposed to be anywhere. That's the point. Yeah, yeah, it's a hamster wheel. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, because again, uh, we we are, according to Yuval Noah Harari, humans are hackable animals. He wasn't well, saying that because we're we're gonna start putting brain chips in everybody. That was, you know, five years ago, six years ago, seven years ago. We weren't doing anything like brain chips back then. How could we have been hackable animals? Oh, well, because you can do it psychologically. He's, he's an overprivileged clown who, uh, you know, somebody gave a forum to, I guess, is like, do, do we have to listen to these idiots? Like, we can go out and live our own lives and build our own stuff <clears throat> independent of all this stuff and not give a fuck about what these idiots think, you know, these would be global rollers want to do. It's, it's really about, you know, knowing your neighbor, um, getting solid foundations in your lifetime. I mean, we, we don't live forever. I, I know these uh, oligarchs like to, you know, put this stuff in their kids, but how many generations like really succeed in business? Like at, at what point does the, uh, the will to like survive and make your business thrive, like pass on to the next generation or the third generation or the fourth, like that, that's what we're seeing now. We're seeing some sloppy implementation mm -hmm. that uh, somebody came up with, you know, generations ago and these kids who are the ones left to implement it, they they don't have the wherewithal to do it. That's why we're seeing this sloppy shit where they're trying to like slap it all in at one time. Like it, it's it's clown like. I I keep waiting for the freaking spaceships in the sky to to oh, land it's <laughs> to coming. land in the to land in the White House's lawn because that's exactly where intelligent fucking life would land, you know, with the, the so-called leaders. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. That's the whole take me to your leader bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. It, they might be... I, heard, um, I, was a, I was at a dog park today and heard people like, you know, overheard people talking about the... Uh, <laughs> The president's address and i think they were probably like trumpers you know silently cobbling together and talking about it but still like people who think this shit's serious like they haven't seen like the whole clownishness of the whole fucking thing it hasn't come apart to them yet i i, I feel bad but I, I don't understand how like I, how I just, can you still be like playing along at this point, at this point. Yeah, like I, I'm over at this point. Like, if, if you're really that fucking dumb, okay, go ahead, do your shit. I'm going to go over here and make sure I'm prepared when the lights go out. So, good luck with good luck with your shit. Honestly, you know, I still have a heart for people that are invested in the political system that, that are gung-ho about voting and campaigning for their candidates, and I think they should still be <laughs> on plates with silk with um cutlery but the I difference is people. they need to sit in the smaller room at thanksgiving at mom and m's at the little um playmates table and they need to be eating on the paper plates with the plastic this forks and right. spoons because you know they 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 get to swim in the kiddie pool yeah. with the floaties on 
because you one, know one bless your heart might you're need still to wear believing a helmet in Santa Claus and D bold. I mean, you well, know that, that's the for me. Show. The, the kind of show that is America. They give you enough money where you're like a Disney adult and you don't watch this shit and you're like comfortable in your lifestyle and you don't pay attention to the genocide or the, the fake fucking promise of uh, you're always the fucking hero. And I mean, what, what's incredible is like, you know, how, take, how, take how do you turn, that, how, how do you turn the, how do you turn that away as an adult though? Like everything's working out in your favor. You got money in your pocket. Um, Disney isn't a bunch of pedophiles or Satanists and like, you know, your shit's good. I, I, uh, you're living in that fantasy, buddy. You're yeah. on that fantasy high. I, I know people like that and they're good people because they haven't had to experience. You yeah. Know, but good the, people oh, still oh, lie to themselves, oh, Rob. Well, absolutely. and that's, that's the problem is if why, a good why? person will lie to themselves, they'll lie to you too. If, if you're doing well and like your kids are doing well and you've got all the stuff you need, why would you, you know, pretend otherwise? Like this isn't, you know, the American dream. I don't know how well, many, the, the, I don't know many people like that. That's, that's the thing. The, the I point I was going to make is it, it's I, kind of a journey to awareness, you know, like for me, hearing my dad bitch constantly when i was you know like in first and second grade still bitching about the committee to re-elect the president and the weathermen like g gordon liddy and haldeman and oliver north and point dexter and others that helped break into the watergate hotel which was hosting the campaign headquarters of george mcgovern the democratic uh, candidate for president in the 1972 election, which of course led to the now infamous Watergate hearings um, right. about the break-in at the Watergate Hotel, which led to Vice President Spiro Agnew of Baltimore, Maryland, and then Richard Milhouse Nixon, the president from Yorba Linda, California, both fleeing like rats from a ship. Uh, and the whole point of my dad's bitchings about it was which the was fact the whole that, point of the break-in uh we don't have real elections that they're fake and they're rigged and it's just uh we live in a gangster world it's just a big gangster world and it's ironic now because we're on grand theft world now but yeah i'm pretty much <laughs> i mean my dad's it, name was little corky if anyway. you're still if you're still hoping no, for that the, 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 uh, uh, i'm that sorry go here. ahead Huh? Yeah, we're still hoping for that savior on a national level. Good luck to you, and um, I hope that delusion works out for you. But but if, like uh, for some people, Rob, if rather than you know losing faith in the election system due to the fuckeries of the 1972 presidential election, they have done it for some people. But for a lot of people, that's before their time. You know, that's before I was born. But my dad was still bitching about it you know, in 79 and 80 and 81, um, you know, eight, nine years later. Well, then in 2000, in Broward County, Florida, you know, the, the national drama was hinging on what was Catherine Harris, the Florida Secretary of State, going to do, who was a, a Bush family attache, and what was going to be the outcome of the Supreme Court that was ruling on the state recount of votes. And then there was the drama about the hanging chads on the Broward County ballots in Palm Beach, Florida. And um, and ultimately, somehow, W was able to rig very publicly and very openly rig both the 2000 and 2004 elections. Uh, despite what clearly looked like uh, a ballot victory for Gore in 2000 and Kerry in 2004. Now, mind you, these are all blood-sucking kid-fucking ghouls, but if we're going to play baseball statistics on the numbers game, they didn't even have the numbers in 2000 or 2004. In fact, the guy that helped cook the numbers in 2004 for Ken Blackwell, the Secretary of State of Ohio, um, 
he was routing all the numbers through a server in Chattanooga. Um, Michael Connell was his name. And he was actually Mm -hmm. testifying to Congress about this when Carl Rove put out a death threat on his head and he told Congress about the death threats and then his plane crashed right before he got home in Cleveland later that night. And, uh, well, he's dead. And so I guess you have to be careful. That's yeah. Bill Gates. That's right. Yeah, that's, that's the way it goes. Yeah. I mean, it, Bill, Bill Gates gives good advice. But what else can we really say? I mean, if I can't take advice from a billionaire, who am I, right? Exactly. But, exactly, but now Rob, you fast forward point. to January 6th. Because maybe the 2000 election is before your time just as much as the 1972 election. No, so, yeah. let's fast forward again. Well, and wasn't there, January um, 6th. Wasn't, wasn't there like some fuckery with the, uh, the 64 election that kept uh, Johnson yes. in office? That's right. Yeah. So, I mean, it's the... There, there's never been a legitimate election. There was all kinds of mobster fuckery with Kennedy coming out on oh, the... Oh, fuck I yeah. I mean, it was a total mobster election. Yes. You want to talk about uh, just a... Sammy the Bull Gravano even confirms that. Yeah, it, that Kennedy it was a would mob not have gotten elected Nixon without the money. I mean, it, 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 was, it, was it was a Bill Hicks bit, but I mean, still. Like, you know, they show him Kennedy getting shot off and his head shot off any questions to the general candidates. Like they only let you see who they want you to see. Yeah. But, but now we fast forward again to January the 6th and what's lost in all of this was the fact that you mean besides weapons, the reason why people were in DC that day was for a rally entitled stop the steal because again the election had been rigged well so some people were in dc so for a publicly. different purpose that day well Any, other people were, but, but i'm saying ostensibly that was the trump stop the steal rally was the big ticket that was the draw that right Any, well that's anything. why you run the op at the opposition's rally Right. Duh. But anybody but who's I'm saying the technology job. available dictates the, 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 that you the, don't have this bullshit that we do now. Well, well, what I'm trying to draw out here is the fact of, in terms of political awareness, there's a point at which the whole shit about, you know, there's audits and they count the ballots and it's very careful and there's these little green elves and they all live at the North Pole with Santa Claus. And they're the ones that make the votes count. And all and there's a point. Maybe it was, if you were alive then, maybe it was the 1960 election when the mob families were going at it between Joe Kennedy money and the, mm. the Nixon money uh, in Vegas. Or maybe it was the 72 election when Nixon's cronies broke into the McCovern headquarters at the Watergate Hotel. Or maybe it was 2000 with the hanging chads in Broward County, Florida. Or maybe, maybe it was in 2020 when we're told that the shits and giggles uh, regime um, somehow became the single most popular political ticket in American history with over 81 million votes. 81 million votes, Fiona. Only to instantly become the least popular political team in American history. I mean, it's really hard to square that circle but the point being there there have the elections for POTUS as people dig in and first they're like whoa what's this electoral college bro and you it's like layers of an onion and and as you start peeling in the more layers you peel back the more the tears flow and then you realize oh my god this is a completely totally scripted shit show Rob Oh. And I've been had, and it's all make believe. There is no elves at the North Pole. Absolutely, I, I don't know. Like I, I don't know what happened in edu- education, but when I was a little kid, they taught me like how it was supposed to be. 
maybe I didn't get one of those teachers who was uh, caught up in the communist dream, but um, the history of America is fouled, of course. You know, the, the, the winner story on anything is going to be fouled, but the ideals of uh, a republic and not mob rule democracy appeal to anybody who's willing to work for something. But I have to give by credit to the Haudenosaunee, the Anunnaki, the ones the French call les Iroquois, or we would call them the Iroquois Confederacy in good old English. The, that's right. And that's the Six Nations today in the Iroquois Confederacy. Um, I can remember all of them. You got the Onondaga, the Mohegan, the Mohawk, the Cayuga, the Seneca, the Tuscarora. Yeah, that's all six. Um, Cherokee used to roll with them back in the day. But anyways, um, oh, their man. great law Magnificent of Seven with the Cherokee. That's, right. that's what I'm talking that's about, right. son. It was seven. Well, no, it was six at that time with the Cherokee, and the Cherokee left, and they went back to five. Because the Tuscaroras were actually from North Carolina, uh, and they were adopted into the Iroquois Confederacy because after Washington killed all the Cherokee in South Carolina, he was killing all the Lumbees and Gullah Geechees and Tuscaroras in North Carolina. And this is in 76 and 1777. Um, wait, so, I thought they were fighting the British at that time. 1776, American Revolution. Right. Well, fighting the Cherokee and the Tuscaroras yeah, was fighting the British because we were allied with the British. Wait, what? So, America Incorporated? The Hold Cherokee up. and the Tuscarora had yeah. both sent chiefs to Buckingham Palace. Yeah. The Cherokee Nation and the Tuscarora Nation both had direct diplomatic relations with the Crown of England. No and shit. And thus were considered allies of England. And that's why when the United States declared its independence on July 4th, 1776 against Great Britain and its allies, that included the Cherokee Nation. And that's why the Cherokee-American War was fought from 1776 to 1779, and it began on July the 4th, because when they declared war against Great Britain, Washington was in South Carolina in July 1776 and immediately started bringing it to the Cherokee right in the grill. Wow. It's an interesting wrinkle in history. So, you know, when we think yeah. about the Revolutionary War and the colonial army fighting, people get the image of Washington crossing the Delaware and, you know, the Prussians and all these other people helping uh, uh, Pollocks, uh, you know, Pulaski and others coming in from across the seas, von Steubenville and all that. But you got to think, most of the Revolutionary War uh, was the colonial army the just going around and burning Indian villages and massacring mm. Indians everywhere, clearing the land for settlement. And when, when America declared its independence, George Washington became the richest man on earth because he had already laid claim to over two and a half million acres that he had claimed himself because he was a surveyor and he primarily only surveyed for one property client. That would be himself. Yeah, but his, that, that was not his, how his, surveying is supposed to work. He, he inherited it all from his family. So... He what? Yeah. Uh, you know, George, George Washington, he inherited that from his father. It was his uh, family. Yeah. Well, like uh, in terms of wealth, Washington didn't have that much At money. He had a lot of debts, but he it. did marry that's into Martha. Uh, me, anyway. <laughs> Martha Custis, his wife, the widow Custis, um, was dripping fucking rich. And her husband, uh, Major Custis, had left her with the plantation on the Potomac there at Mount Vernon. Oh, dear. So, when George Washington married up to Martha Custis, he stepped, I mean, knee deep into some rich ass pussy. 
So was that uh, the plantation where he pulled the teeth out of the slaves to make his own dentures? Yes. Okay. And then when they ran out of teeth, he went on to their increase, which is a euphemism for their children. I need to catch the newsletter, for Christ's sake. I, I've been missing out. I, <laughs> I don't think that was in the newsletter. <laughs> I, I, I heard a whole bunch of bullshit for my freaking uh, paying attention. Like history was something that I actually paid attention to. Like school was a whole lot of bullshit, but I was kind of interested in that anyway. You know, I've seen on old land warrants and land grants where plantations are being conveyed. Um, and I believe it's on the Mount Vernon uh, grant as well, where they, when, when it's, because when Martha Custis is formally married to George Washington, Mount Vernon and all of its, and I quote, buck Negroes um, are conveyed there with, as part of the dowelry, that, that, Dowelry, if I'm saying that right, the Dowelry, Dowry, D O W E L. It's Fresh it's the water. gift that comes with the pussy, the Dowelry, right. right? Um, and so, anyways, they they were counting the number of slaves on the plantation in terms of buck negroes, which would be sires. I love my woman, but I really you as, know, as well as um, she Negroes, she, um, because you know you, you get to keep them and their increase. Because when the s slaves breed, <laughs> the new slaves that are born are your slaves as well. And once the children get old enough, you might be able to. Well, once you're done having fun with them and you know having your Masonic um, rituals and stuff with them, uh, then you can sell them off. Um, you know. It's, kind of painful for the parents i guess but they're not really parents like humans they're just slaves um, anyways um and and they have really good teeth at, yeah. at what point are they not slaves anymore do they ever earn their dough in this system of bullshit <laughs> you know, well, I, I do want to caution that although george washington was a, a slave owner and had many slaves escape he was also a founding father and so I don't want to contradict Jason Burmis when he says that our founding fathers were racist, because although he was a plantation owner, George Washington was totally not a racist. I mean, how can you be a racist and wear African-American teeth in your mouth? I mean, square that circle. Square that circle? Uh, we know. Well, I agree with Jason. I don't, I don't know. I, I think you and his got us right. I would say we don't try to uh, pretend like 300 years ago is what's happening today. In, in most Rob, if you hated the blacky people, you <laughs> wouldn't be wearing a whole grill of blacky teeth in your mouth. Well, I and mean, using to, blacky teeth to chew up your own food that you swallow. To, That's love for the blacks. Yeah, George well, but to be, black fair, like Yona, Joe Biden. to be fair, to be fair, right? Or, like. To be uh, fair, or the government, the devil, and uh, well, no, like Darwin. Yeah, but Darwin hadn't even written his uh, magnum opus uh, of the favored races yet, right? So, like, racism wasn't even really like good and burning hot back during like revolutionary times. Like, it was just barely a, a, a an ember. It was, it was just like in a continuation of like, you know, what had happened in Roman times. Like everybody was a slave. Well, if yeah, you were it wasn't just if, black people. If, yeah, if you had been it conquered. It was poor people. Yeah, poor people who had been conquered are slaves. So, you know, whoever. That's was, how it's always worked. Whoever is determined to be the noble people, regardless of your worth, you were always proud. See, but before there was racism, there was. um I would call it classism because, you know, the difference between Europeans and Native Americans, as, as the writings tell us, you know, they wrote this shit down and we have receipts, you know, from the 16th and 17th centuries, long before Malthus and Darwin and the rest of them. Um, and, and they would characterize us as 
uncivilized savages and beasts um, that have, uh, as um, um, Cristobal Colón or um, Christopher Columbus, whatever the fuck you want to call him, um, you know, he said, they have no idea of the metal sword. They cut their hand on the blade, not knowing its sharpness, just playing with it. They have no concept of money, and they freely share amongst themselves. Um, thus showing, you know, that, that uh, they're completely wild and savage and uncivilized. Um, and so, that you know, which, they, they then go on to describe, name. and you look at, like, the journals of the Lewis and Clark expedition after Jefferson made the uh, Louisiana Purchase. Lewis and Clark were dispatched from the mouth of the Missouri, at, well, St. Louis, and to go to find this Northwest Passage to the Pacific. And, you know, as they're talking about their first contact encounter with different tribes like the the you know the Anishinaabe, the Lakotas and others, Osage and Cheyenne and, and whatnot, all on up to the Nez Pierce and the Coeur d'Alene's and the Salish nations. Um you know, they're talking about these different species of animals like the buffalo and the catamounts and these and 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 they describe the the savage Indians in the same biological regard as a completely different animal, separate and different from human. So, you know, although racism has developed into something modern, this intellectual concept of racial superiority has been there from the get-go, uh, but more so in kind of a blue blood, mud blood type of, more of an royalty way of, I have six names in my name because I belong to the house of shit snap, motherfucker, so you know. Socioeconomic uh, designation, really. I don't know. I I, I can kind of see it. I take uh, every person. I take every person as they come, and uh, I love all people generally. So you have to do something to not not that I trust people easily. Uh, it takes a little bit to develop trust, but I mean, I love all people generally, openly. You have to give me a reason to uh, personally say fuck you. I don't give a fuck what race you are if you're uh gay trans whatever your stupid fucking uh thing that you want everybody to believe you are well that's the whole trick isn't it like to to get us stereotyping each other so that we oh don't even give each other a chance right listen if you're if you're not affecting me i don't give a fuck what you do as long as it's not hurting other people you're hurting other people like you're trying to get people to cut their penises off or go from having a vagina to having a penis when they're you know at the point where they're not capable of making that dis decision rationally like i got a problem with you listen i heard that, the other day that scared the fuck what, out of me what did, mental illness, what, did, what, what did mental illness um and everybody believing in your mental illness become oh, dude dude the whole thing they they have uh they have some people seriously twisted psychologically. It is uh unreal what mm -hmm. they have managed to do to some people psychologically. Oh, I know. I, I, I have a daughter who's uh twenty one years old and she like probably I think she was like sixteen and uh she was like you wouldn't accept me if I was transgender. And I'm like, but you're not. So like, I don't understand what you, I don't know. I don't know where the argument came Why from. Why are you but upset? Was, you're like, she's just ranting and raving. Like, I'm like, that's the dumbest shit ever. Like if you, if you really felt that way and you could convince me maybe, but uh, when you're an adult, it's the time to make that decision. Like you can't vote. You can't go to war. 
Yeah, matter of fact, you can't even drink until you're 21. No, nope, um, but you and, can cut your dick off. Yeah. Yeah. That seems to be yeah, Or chop your tits off. Absolutely. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and uh, yank those ovaries. You're not going to need them for your life as a man. And, oh, by the way, you'll never have children. It's part of the humiliation ritual. And we're all supposed to accept it and go along and uh, pretend it's not abnormal. Well, shit, is it a humiliation ritual or a mutilation ritual? Because both well, things you know, are it happening. Turns out, it turns out, Drizzle, that Aldous Huxley was correct on Brave New World. God damn Although, it. you don't it have to be coma. born <laughs> an Epsilon. Oh, you don't oh, have oh, to be just born an Epsilon. You can transition to becoming yeah. an Epsilon. I'm actually, cut I'm your glad. Dick off, cut your dick off, you yeah. know, get the black rings around your eyes, I'm, get on that Soma diet. I'm glad you said that, Soma. Yona. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because did, did <laughs> either one of you know that the FDA is now approving LSD for treating generalized anxiety disorder? Well, I mean, where the fuck have they been for the last uh, 30 years? Yeah, now, no, no, that's no. Not they're talking gonna... about like putting you on a on a prescription, Rob, as in well, like dosing you on the regular. Now, now, what do you call it when like you're already taking He's um, hormone replacement therapy, but then you take the LSD with that? Like the some drugs don't mix. What do you call that? Um, uh, a cocktail. Yeah. Yeah, like like the movie with Tom Cruise where he's the bartender. Yeah, right. I, I, but I, I have a, a feeling we're moving into more the, psychedelic. Yeah, I yeah. Feel we're moving into the era of anything psychedelic, that like do, Tom Cruise Scientology, a, uh, supposed illegal high, or you know, get off or anything. It, it's all turned into prescription. And you're gonna be able to get it because they want to. They they don't want to. When when the currency becomes digital and there is no black or gray market, that they, they're gonna get every dime through the shit. And I mean, if you're lucky, it's gonna be pure. If you know, not, speaking of getting every if it's dime coming from the government, it ain't gonna be pure. Did you know, Rob, that <laughs> if you decide to cut your tits off or cut your dick off or whatever, you know, it's free choice. You you just choose freely. Um, bear in mind when it comes to the hormone drugs and the surgeries and everything else, if you add up all the money that's involved with, um, those decisions, um, turns out to be very profitable. If you happen to be the, uh, medical service provider, I'm just saying, oh, and, and I'm well, sure I've the, the chemist as well. You know, the, the corporation yeah, that's right. actually manufacturing the product for the you therapy. Should, you should yeah. never follow the money, you conspiracy theorist, realist, whatever you could call yourself. Never follow money. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not a conspiracy theorist anymore because all my conspiracy theories were Proven. That's right. True. So I've moved on. I'm now a collusion hypothesis. Oh, really? Oh, I I consider myself a conspiracy expert at this point. Uh, because now I've got a number of hypotheses regarding some ongoing and collusion. Almost like collusion, I, which yeah. collusion is told, worse than conspiracy. I told you so. You want to hear some more stuff? So you don't even have to you don't even have to hear like the story out yet but just wait to find out if they're trying to lie to you here's this here's the keys if they're trying to lie to you it's a really simple formula but they open their mouth usually well especially when they tell you that you have to feel a certain way about it right now it's always got to be right now. Yeah. Back now. I got to say, you, you know, out. Drizzle made the comment last night during the um, State of the Funyun or whatever the fuck it was, um, <laughs> campaign speech, basically. And, uh, I thought it was you know, for years. The state of the grift. 
I thought it was a years, there's been real entertainment value. You sure in was looking to the man. left and the right of the dais. There was <laughs> always a, some good action coming from either the VP or the speaker or both with the dramatics, like you know, with Pelosi and the big oversized fucking D sized paper ripping the uh, Trump speech or, or whatever. You know, there was the they actually put some effort. It was entertaining. Yeah, put some crystal effort. meth in for more infomercial. If we're gonna be honest, and last night, Louisiana's uh, Big Johnson, Little Dick Energy, Kamala. I mean, even the crocodile neck wasn't doing anything for me. I, it was honestly, I <laughs> my takeaway was it was the worst campaign speech from the worst president in U.S. history. But to be fair, he wasn't elected; he was militarily installed. Well, I do have to say, uh, from the the snippets that we watched last night, because that that was all I've seen. I haven't watched any uh, replay or anything like that. Uh, oh, there's still time. There's oh, sure, I, but I, I don't, I don't have time for it. But anyway, what I'm saying is what I saw from Kamala was she was doing her best Absolutely. to play the straight man, right? Big teeth, big claps, up oh, and man. down. She was, she oh was trying, she, was she wanted to laugh so bad. Like she, she was, was her, doing, she was best. holding it in. She and, was at her best. Man. She can't do any better than that. She didn't have to speak. I gotta say, whoever gave out the drugs to shits and giggles last night, by God. Yeah. They'd That's really been the holding chef. back on the good stuff. I would feel a lot better about the direction of the world if those guys were pumped up with freaking meth and they actually made the decisions. Let's get the, the oligarchs making the decisions all pumped up on that kind of meth. They I already was, are. What the hell that, was that's your thing. They already to. are. It's listening. either nuclear destruction or they're going to give us free energy and we're all going to be fucking happy and plentiful. The Rob, rest of if these rich motherfuckers weren't already pumped up on drugs, they wouldn't <laughs> have the tramp stamps that they do. Come <laughs> on. Man. Well, nobody wants to give up that legacy, right? Sorry. Trust gonna fund end, money. Gonna end sometime. I mean, volcano, EMP blast. Oh, Keep random on asteroid, it. yeah, sure. Yeah. But Keep why not on. Why not get ahead of it and Solar make it flare. seem like that shit's going to happen and then you can make a, a shit ton of money off of Dude, people got, flipping out over it. I got hey, a bunch hey of, you know what's worse than an asteroid? I got a bunch Louis, of paper, 16, money, and rocks, and, dude. What, torches and pitchforks, yeah. yeah. And guillotines. <laughs> The electric ain't on anymore, but I got a bunch of freaking paper and, uh, you know, gold stones. Good luck. Oh, well, apparently, uh, apparently nobody's trying to develop alternative forms of currency. If you, if you talk to random strangers on the internet, you'll hear stupid shit like that. Just do a search on Costco. They're selling like out their ass, uh, gold and silver. Are they seriously? You know, Rob, it'll be a lot easier to buy that loaf of bread with your CBD um, chip in the wrist instead of having to take an entire cooler full of fucking $100 bills just for the loaf of bread. Y'all ready to live in Venezuela yet? <laughs> How about uh, some turbo inflation? I just keep waiting for it to happen. I wonder what will happen to you know people who are in that corporate situation. Well, but, we might be about to find out, Rob. It's funny that yeah. you should say that. Uh, okay. I was reading an article from, uh, I think it was from Reclaim the Net earlier today. I, I have it uh, linked in the replay notes when the replay gets published tomorrow. Uh, but uh, apparently the United States federal government has already started employing banks to spy on Americans. Uh, and they're linking specific purchases with uh, potential crimes that may be com committed at some point in the future, right? So, like, if free you... crime prevention at last, right, right, right. So, like, they're saying, yeah, they're saying, if you uh, pay for a VPN, if you have a VPN subscription. 
to provide you anonymity when you get on the internet, then you're probably going to become an active shooter. So we got to, we got to come get you. Didn't Not Russia just ban? Not Russia a joke. just banned VPN. The, the, yes. you know, Russia just banned VPNs like within the last week. Yeah. Just happened. Uh, but you know, fortunately, I don't think there's any like Russian hackers or any dark web in Russia, so that should take care of that. Oh no! Oh, there are. Uh oh. <laughs> there have to be. There have to be. Yeah, there there could be. I mean, I've said <laughs> enough. This guy right here, he's got a real freaking axe to grind. <laughs> you like, don't own the cat. The cat owns you. Yeah, pretty much. This guy right here, my daughter gilded me into getting them. Showed me a Facebook ad. He was uh, had been six months in the shelter, and they were going to execute him if somebody didn't adopt him. So I took him. Sweetest cat ever. We have a cat that has adopted us that lives on the back porch. A big orange tomcat named Mr. Pimp. Oh, nice. And uh, he killed an owl the other day. I guess the owl was flying too low. And wow. when I went out on the back porch, he was out there eating that shit like some KFC, Colonel. Um, God. That's oh, why I shared God. the uh, the meme of the cat that looked like briar rose that's eating a fried chicken up on a flagpole for some reason but it's using its claws to hang on to the meat of the whole fried chicken while it's just you know with the mouth just eating the fuck out of that bird something about birds and cats like cats are just each other. fascinated with fucking birds and all they want to do is eat bird way more than mice. Mm. The, the the prize for a cat what? is leaping into the air, biting into a fucking bird with the mouth, pulling that bird out of the air, back down to the ground, plucking feathers, tossing that motherfucker around like a rag doll, eating <laughs> the fuck out of it. Well, the there's, cat's life. There's, there's the whole instinct. You can uh, take an indoor cat and show it those YouTube videos mm -hmm. of the birds, and they'll sit there and they'll like hop up next to the TV. And you know, <laughs> for a little while, I'll be fooled by it. They'll be trying to bat at them, but uh, they're still fascinated by it. They'll sit there and watch it all day. Yeah, it's just genetic memory at this point. Absolutely. You know. Cats have been doing it so long. And I'm sure it's it's also, you know, part of the fact that a bird's movement is kind of erratic. You know, that catches the cat's attention, obviously. And then once it gets a hold of it, it's tasty. It's certainly better <laughs> than that slop that the fucking human's been giving me. Yeah. Drizzle, yeah. this also means that we will be able to train the cats to take down drones. Much Correct. as the Houthis already have. Correct, because everybody knows that birds aren't real. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure my cats have proved to me when they've drugged, you know, birds that have real birds that have fallen in their prey up to my porch and uh, started eating them. I didn't see any digital electronics, and, and I'm an IT guy, so I'm pretty sure they're real. You would know what it looks like, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure. I mean, I, you know, I'm just one guy out in the pine lands on an island myself. But, you know, maybe. And maybe. By, by the way, uh, for those keeping score, uh, tonight's Scrabble word is ornithology. 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 All right. Back to you, Drizzle. Yeah. What's the study of cats, Yona? Ladies and out? gentlemen, we, we are just starting the second hour. There is still plenty of time for you to get in on this conversation tonight. The, uh, the Zoom link is in the Liberty Radio Telegram channel as well as 
uh, the show posting on the Grand Theft World forum. Uh, hop in and let us know what's on your mind. I'll let you know what's on my mind for the first time tonight. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be getting on an airplane anytime soon. How about Uh-oh. you guys? Y'all been paying attention to what's been going on with the airplanes? Oh, yeah. And I just flew from falling the, uh, off of them? I, I tried not to pay attention. I just flew from Philadelphia to Colorado and back. Holy and shit, Rob. I was making fun of a friend of mine who was uh, going with me. He, he had like a voucher with Southwest, and both of his flights were on 737s. And like, oh, he, God. He, he sent me his like time so I could kind of coordinate. And I was like, dude, you know that the doors are like popping off of those things in the air. And he's like, wheels yeah. are falling off now. Wheels like, are literally falling off. Yeah. I'm going to say those are the South Carolina, uh, airships that were built there. Uh, Hey Rob, do you know what sound one of those planes makes on a nose landing? I, I don't want to know, Yona. Uh, well, it, it it I think it's Boeing. Anyways, <laughs> Boeing, <laughs> Boeing, Boeing, Boeing. Yeah. If you're, it, it, if you're it makes the same sound when the uh, landing gear uh, just decides to retract on on the tarmac. How, how's this, Yona? If you hear a sound, it's probably better than not hearing a sound. <laughs> I mean, it, it's got to be, you know. It's got to be pretty, you know, if you ever wondered about wearing your seatbelt and, you, and you're thinking about taking your seatbelt off and you're looking out the window and you see, oh, one, one engine explodes and then half the wing breaks off and then it's getting a little bit turbulent and then the entire wall panel gets sucked away and now it's just you next to the clouds and you're like, yeah, I'm going to leave my seatbelt on. But now I guess I can use this ashtray. I guess I can have a cigarette now. <laughs> At that point, I would definitely be lighting up a cigarette. Although I don't know how I would get it. Oh, I'll use my dad's lighter. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Windproof. Yeah, that would do it. Absolutely. It, it, you know, if, if if this plane's going down, Daddy's having a cigarette by the fuck down. Well, after I busted my buddy's balls about his uh, trip there and trip back on seven thirty sevens. I was trying to find out what I was taking, and my trip there was on the 737. I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> the whole issue is the fact that Boeing's used to be exclusively manufactured in SeaTac, you know, Seattle, Tacoma, you know, up there in Washington State. I mean, they uh, used but to, they have used union. to be the builder. They of have Boeing, union you know, workers, okay. they have union guilds. And so, in order to break the union, Rob, Boeing had a new manufacturing plant built with the help of Nuki Haley down in South Carolina, which is one of those right-to-work states, and it's a non-union Boeing facility where they could just use scab labor and unskilled labor to slowly replace the highly skilled workforce in Washington State at the main Boeing plants. And so... The, the new project and the main new planes being built at the new plant in South Carolina is called the Boeing 737 MAX. It's a, a new model of airplane. Probably never heard of it. It's made the news a couple of times for um, a couple of things. But other than that, you know, it's the new aircraft and it's safe-ish. No, not even. Not even close. A wheel fell off during, so that's during the difference takeoff. Between people say, what's the difference between skilled labor and unskilled labor? What's the difference between a union workshop and a right to work workshop? Um, I don't, see, I don't the even wheels know if fall that's off, it. The walls fall off. You know, I don't even know if that's it. I think it's just the 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 regular decay that happens in the system of planned obsolescence, right? Because the, the, the quality of the widgets that you produce in that system gets worse over time. Well, we it's did an inevitable find out result that of that system. 
you know, there has been investigation into Boeing and the 737 MAX specifically, it turns out. And and we found out, but it was revealed through the uh, process of it, these investigations that, um, well, actually, the Federal Aviation Administration doesn't directly inspect the planes or the processes themselves, but they have an arrangement with Boeing, and Boeing inspects themselves and then lets the FAA know if anything's wrong. Oh, oh well, there you go. Yeah, that, that sounds just fine. Sure. Well, we'll just so let them investigate the themselves. That you're then. putting in the air. Is yeah. it okay? Uh, yeah, all right. We'll mark it down. It's okay. Thanks. Well, we'll go. We'll go on the honor system because yeah, that works so well. Works so well. Well, it, it, it's only because Boeing is a defense contractor, one of the main defense contractors, along with Lockheed Martin and Raytheon. Raytheon, Northrop Grumman. Yeah, yeah, and and and. Wow, I didn't even have this listed in the notes. Uh, and Canada. no, Palantir. That's right. Palantir Lockheed. is now a major defense contractor because Palantir is going to be handling construction of the AI for the Department of Defense. Allegedly, they don't already have one, well, which is bullshit, right. but, you know, yeah. But if you've now the they're going to build one, sure. If you've seen the movie Eagle Eye, that probably isn't very far off the truth. Yeah. I can guarantee you that Palantir will be setting up shop in beautiful Bluffdale, Utah, adjacent Camp Williams, Home to the, the United the States Center? National Data Center, yeah. are we where to where Yona's beautiful dossier is. Hi, dossier. Are are we supposed to pretend that eighty year old dementia patients are like directing something somewhere? <laughs> I, I mean, for my own sanity, I'd like to I at mean, least that's, think that's it's some the story written, they put on yeah, TV. Program. I mean, I'd like to at least think it's some poorly written AI program. It would make me feel better. Because anybody who believes that that guy is running anything other than to the bathroom to take a shit every 10 minutes is... No, we, we played all those songs last night, Rob. But that's the thing. He doesn't have to run to the bathroom to take a shit. That's right. I'm he sure. just shits right where he is. He's the president. He poops on himself. President, especially. Yeah. Thank God. Thank God somebody's there to lead us because I, I don't know what I would do in my day-to-day -day life. Thank God there's somebody there to wipe his butt. Grandpa Joe wasn't there. You know, uh, I, I just want to make a there's, correction. Uh, there's been a lot of jokes made about the fact. <laughs> oh, uh, I, I don't know if I made this correction the other day, but it was pointed out to me that I had said that Nikki Haley lost her primary to Trump in North Carolina. I was wrong. Nikki Haley did, in fact, win her primary in her state of South Carolina against Trump and thus decided to not drop out of the race. So <laughs> for those of you still pulling for Nimarata, Rondawa, or Nikki Haley or whatever you want to call her, um, I'm going to go with Nimarata or Nimrod for short. Yeah. Um, yeah. Nimrod just has a certain, uh, what do you call it? Well, a panache. There you go. If, if anybody didn't Part see, is French. If if anybody didn't see what the people, the Oligarch Swedish French pastry was, these two old fucking people humiliating all of us. The people, I I feel bad for the people with Trump derangement syndrome who like really believe. I don't feel bad for them. It cuts I, I both ways. For the Trump derangement syndrome. They have done it to themselves. Spectrum. They do it themselves. Yes. Like, do you think? Oh my God! I mean, think about it, Rob. They bought it, it, into it the bullshit. Place. Look, there, they there they had a choice to believe it or not believe it, just like the rest of us did, and they I chose know, like, to believe it. 
Maybe it's because I grew up with the World Wrestling Federation and seeing those clowns get up there, like with their chests out, talking their shit, and um, they're all buddies, you know, behind the scenes. Like I, I understood that when I was like twenty about this political system because that's what it was. It was just like a big grandiose. Um, grandstanding bullshit one side's against whatever the other side's for and uh, nothing ever gets accomplished unless it's in the interest of people with money but I, I guess maybe I missed it my perspective I don't know. I mean, might be I, wrong I grew up with wrestling too. not accepted not accepted in all 50 states um, maybe in maybe you know, invalid in U.S. territories, but that's what I've seen. You know, I was just going to make the comment that the Trump derangement syndrome cuts both ways. You know, for some, Trump is the embodiment of the Republican Party and just pure evil and this greatest threat to our democracy and some type of weird liberal fantasy. And then for others, on the other side of the coin, there's this conservative fantasy that Trump is a, a savior and uh, a Christian <laughs> <laughs> yeah and some type of he's savior hypocrite complex. And, uh, you know, both of these are yona just complete he's a fucking delusions. he's a moral man yona he's a moral man The fuck he is. He's a real estate developer. he's a fucking How many real estate developers have you known with he's morals? He is like a third generation uh, Rockefeller, you know, snake oil salesman. Motherfucker like wrote some grandiose book about uh, the art of a deal. I, I, I grew up in southern New Jersey and you know, Trump was a name that you heard. Like if you want to do something for yourself, like look out for this guy. So I bought his book and it was it was bullshit. Like you could tell he didn't write it and that uh, his dad had a bunch of money and left him an empire and he fucked it up and he has like the crumbs of it now left over where he, he could have, you know, had like 10 times as much money as he does now if he would have just sat on it and didn't try to do anything. Prime I, real I just noticed in the chat on the Odyssey there, Prime uh, real estate in New York. <laughs> mi amigo uh, Wheezy es contigo con nosotros esta noche. Orale, güey. Anyway. Yeah. Wheezy is indeed joining us tonight. What up, Wheezy? See if we can get together tomorrow night. We'll make it work. We'll figure something out. Well, I'm going to duck out now, guys. Have a great night. All Good right. talking to you. Thanks for joining us, Rob. It was good to find out what was on your mind tonight. Come back anytime. You're always welcome. Thanks, With guys. Dolegi Rob. Well, speaking, uh, Yona, of uh, knowing what's on your mind, you remember, you remember back, I want to say it was maybe like 18 months ago, 12, 18, maybe 24 months ago, there was a video that was going around. Everybody covered it, right? Where they were talking about, um, it, was, it was like a, a World Economic Forum presentation type of thing. And they were going through this woman's typical work day, right? And uh, the, they were uh, doing all sorts of different stuff. I don't remember specifically what, uh, but they were focusing on uh, this thing that she had Uh, that would read her brain waves and then report that activity back to her employer, right? Right. You remember that? Uh huh. You Yeah. you remember that whole thing, It was, and, and it was reading her thoughts back to the boss. Yeah. right? Right, like the whole time, all all during the day while she's working, regardless of what she's thinking about. So if she's thinking about the hot dude in the cubicle. a few rows down who just started working there a couple Yeah, of days it was ago, this really they're going awesome. to know that she's distracted, right? They had this awesome little dystopian little vignette that they had 
right. produce this video. Yeah. Right, 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 right. Well, and then they talk also, about it like a TED talk. It's really groovy, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And like all the great things that it's going to do, like it's going to help improve your sleep patterns and like all this great shit, right? Well, it turns out that on top of their awesome uh, new visual uh, uh, prosthetic that they just released, Apple has patented an AirPod that can read your brain waves. Awesome. At last. It's the perfect companion to, to the dork goggles, isn't it? But why don't we have the smell phone yet? We have the cell phone, but we don't have the you smell have phone. To be Why don't we? Fiona. We still don't have that technology no. where I can take not my for, cell phone. That's here not for the profane, Yona. And 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 put it right up to my taint. That is not for and the profane. And send a a, no. a a smexed message. That's not where where the receiver then pushes the no. button, and the little anus on the phone then produces the exact same odor that you digitally uploaded, where's that technology? That's not for the hoi polloi. No. You have to be an you ascended can send master. A dick pic, but you can't send the smell of your dick? Come on, future time. I mean, really? Do you really want to smell Anthony Weiner? <laughs> <laughs> And this is why you keep coming back time after time, folks. This isn't just for viewing. It's also for listening. Yeah. And it, I think the radio part gives it away. But, you know, just to clarify. No, seriously, they, they Apple, Apple has this patent. I saw it. Uh, and it looks fucking terrifying. It looks absolutely Ooh. terrifying. That was, that was, again, on top of finding out that the banks were already spying on you and reporting all that shit back to the government. That stuff's already going on, folks. It's not coming. It's not down the road. It's already here. It's already happening. They're already compiling your social credit score for you. The next step is uh, the, digital, the digital coinage, right? which will be in your electronic wallet that'll be administered to you by the Federal Reserve. Yeah. Here's the thing, folks. When you go to, you know, up your game, when you go to level up digitally, you want to start slowly when you start to plug in. I recommend going with FireWire. Then you can work yourself up to USB-C, then Ethernet, then full USB. Otherwise, you're just going to be gaping the whole time. Yeah, that, that one was lost on me, but... <clears throat> or you can I just go kind of completely wireless. Just go completely wireless. You know, I don't know where you get it implanted. Um, my recommendation would be implant by the tram stamp. Implant by the tram stamp. That way, you know... It, it, if you need to upload or if you need to reset it, you can just reach right there in the small of your back, push the little red button, pull out the string. You're good to go again. Nice, like a wind-up doll. Yeah, exactly. That's awesome. How it works. There's a patent for that, too. So how do, how do they do it, Yona? Do they, need, do they even need a big event or... And they just keep slow rolling the, the control structure. Um, well, I think September the 11th, 2001 kind of answers that question. As does December the 7th, 1941. As does the burning of the Reichstag in Deutschland, Germany there. Yeah, there's there's some serious false flaggery coming along. I mean, how do you have your Gaza Strip omelet without breaking some October 7 eggs? You know what I'm saying? When it comes to narrative, 
you need this big event in order to justify what you had already planned to do ahead of time. But, oh my gosh, this thing just happened. And, well, now we have this... Um, all right, I'm going to say it's providing America tools to respond in opposing terrorism. See, I'm not getting it right. Patriot I was Act. trying to remember from 2. memory 0. the oh, the, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the Patriot Act because the <clears throat> the Patriot Act turns out when people refer to the Patriot Act. That's actually P A T R I O T, um, and it was um, reauthorized over and over again. Uh, let's, I've got, I've got it pulled up here. I was just, oh my god, I don't have my mouse plugged in. What? I have to use the touchpad and oh. kind of. Patriot Act Wikipedia. God damn, I don't want an official fucking page. To give. There we go. Ha ha! Okay. USA Patriot Act. The formal name of the federal statute is the Uniting and Strengthening America by providing appropriate tools required to intercept and obstruct terrorism. And Good Lord. if you didn't know, now you know, Biggie Smalls. Has nothing to do so with then, patriotism. Well, no. <laughs> and there is legislation waiting for uh, some sort of uh, cyber event, right? Yep. A digital Patriot Act is what I've heard it referred to as, which has a whole new uh, level of uh, oppression that the government can dish out to people that it terms, I don't know, whatever. Oh, my gosh. Targets. Google and YouTube. It'll just be targets. When Imagine if Google and YouTube and Facebook all crash for like, geez, five or six hours. Well, it's going to be like a digital 911. We'll have to respond. Interesting that you should ask that question, Yona, because during the State of the Union uh, address last night, several government online services went down, including the Department of Homeland Security, as well as ICE and a few others. Uh, and they were down for several hours last night. Huh. Just a coincidence. Yeah. It's a curious timing, you know. Although I did not see my favorite impeachment candidate, Alejandro Mallorca. Oh, he was there. I saw him. I saw I was his bald head. For him. Yeah, I saw. Oh, him. he was there. Yeah, he's oh. he's a fucking psycho. Oh. oh my god. Oh, Denzel Washington meme. Oh, he, I'm so relieved. Look in oh. his eyes, and you're like, oh my god. I was about to get so mad too. I was like, motherfucker, if George Santos was there and Alejandro wasn't, was I Santos was there? Be... Did he crash yeah. it? Oh, yeah. He crashed the party, man. Oh, Ooh, that's the awesome. lips were so mad. That's awesome. Oh my God, what is he doing here? He's exercising his floor privilege. And he's a criminal. Where, where are we? America? What is he doing here? Good for him. I'm very happy for him. The best part of all was two or three of the liberal guests that were brought in for shout outs during the speech literally had some Starbucks barista hairdos going on. I was digging that. But by the end of the State of the Union, I was ready for a venti mocha. You feel me? Um, but, you know, funny thing. Um, have you ever heard of... Um, it's called Mina. And I'm not talking about the uh, place airport in Arkansas. In Arkansas. No, Mina. M-E-N-A. 
I think I, a, I think uh, I drove by Mino on my way down to Acapulco. Uh, it's a capitalism term for marketing, and it refers to Middle East and North Africa. Okay. And so, uh, with regards to Starbucks, their Starbucks unit globally in Mina, which um, I'm not sure if Mina, Arkansas itself has a Starbucks. It's it's possible. I don't I, know. I didn't stop. I kind of doubt it because there's not much in Mina these days. Know what I mean? Anyways, um, well, it turns out Starbucks um, really is ride or die with Israel, apparently. And um, that's been an issue no. for some consumers of their products, particularly in the Middle East and North Africa market. Yeah, what was going on there? Starbucks I heard something about that. Stores. And so their MENA unit, their Middle East, North Africa unit of Starbucks Global, just announced layoffs of, what was it, 1,200 people in so many different stores? <laughs> That's right. Um, like, oh, okay, you want to boycott us? Um, we'll and so fire half Starbucks, of our staff. HQ and That's Seattle. A straight baller move Washington right there. They, they responded to what's going on there by saying that this presents a great opportunity for growth in the region. It absolutely does. Now that we've had to close stores, we've got an opportunity got to an grow. Got an opportunity to grow. Region. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I guess that's the strategy that they're going with for the U.S. auto market as well. Because yeah. you know? they got rid of all those jobs making internal combustion engine vehicles. And then they got rid of all those jobs making electric vehicles. So, yeah, there's there's plenty of room for growth there now. But if we can get everyone to move to a 15 minute chitty and you can just do your chitty walk every day, you don't need no chitty car. Right. Just take Chitty Subway. Right. And, and don't worry, it's safe on Chitty Subway. There are Chitty Subway everywhere. <laughs> Have you seen the New York City Subway lately? Like, what's with all the national... I know what it is. MTA, that's um, Metropolitan Transit Authority. They're the owner and operator of the New York Subway system there. They're getting really serious about fare evasion. The scourge of the subway system. <laughs> you... Rats. You can jump through that turnstile when you got the motherfucking AR in your face. Bitch. Oh, yeah, Respect they probably still can. Life. Pay the three bucks or uh, the MPs will haul your ass over there. I'll tie you with some zip ties. You won't even get handcuffs, bitch. I thought they were bringing in the National Guard to stop like all the stabbings and shootings and, and stuff. And right, and the, and the best way to stop that, because I mean, think about it: is a stabber and a shooter going to stop to pay the fare before they go through the turnstiles to then go on the subway and stab and shoot? No, it begins. I think they have actually. It begins with fare evasion. Maybe if they can stop the fare know. evasion. I don't know. I've never been to New York City. I have no desire to go there. Because, you know, they, they, they've got these new plexiglass gates that go floor to ceiling. So there's no way you can jump the turnstiles now, you miscreants. Doesn't that, like, prevent air circulation, though? Like, wouldn't it get really stuffy down there? And, like, it, I've heard it doesn't really smell all that great to begin with. You're going to, like, you're going to stop airflow? It doesn't stop uh -huh. Pizza Rat and that big slice of pizza from getting back over to the subway platform. So, you know, they're not completely well, form-fitting. They're, they're trying out all types of strategies to stop fare evasion. Um, you know, I think uh, the security presence on the subways will help um, until more of the tunnels and viaducts. Uh, are closed as is regularly happening now due to um, 
Well, they had to close a, vi- a section of Viaduct on one of the elevated sections of subway line because the pylon was in two pieces because of rust. It had completely rusted. That's through. nice. Um, and so they they fixed it with some temporary supports on four sides wrapped around the two pieces. Um, and it's back open. But we're good. Um, and then uh, the tunnel with the collapsing part, they put in like a piece of culvert that was just a little bit smaller that was in like three sections that they could bolt together um, where like the street is like caving in on top of it because that's a part of Subway where it was a cut and cover where they cut, where, where they dug the street out, laid down the, the tracks and then filled it back in and covered it over called cut and cover technique and so like the literally like the cobblestones of the street were like falling in on the trains and so oh wow they've got that piece of culvert in there and so that that and that's fixed now it's, it's back open and running and everything so um clearly the biggest issue they need to spend money on is ferry evasion clearly <laughs> jesus christ how much how new much? york subway system yeah, yeah. How much longer till New York looks like that Kurt Russell documentary? Oh, we're already there. Aren't we? <laughs> we're, we're just waiting we're for him to blow there. the bridges. Yeah. Oh, the, yeah. The only city more frightening than New York when it comes to crumbling infrastructure, and I think Rich and Tony will back me on this, Pittsburgh, New Haven, Connecticut? motherfucking Pennsylvania. Oh. Pittsburgh. You want to talk about bridges and tunnels, buddy. Let me tell you something. Pittsburgh is where the Ohio River begins. And so it's mm-hmm. already split by three rivers, right? You got the Correct. Monongahela, Allegheny, and the uh, Ohio. And the Ohio, yeah. Uh, and they're Beaver County, Pennsylvania. Um, it's and, called the and Confluence. So it's, 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 you got these, not only do you have bridges everywhere, mm-hmm. you've got tunnels. The boot, well, because it's tunnels. also Several it's hills. not just the rivers there, but there's also uh, Appalachia. You know, yeah, there's mountains. Your your Pittsburgh is so deep into Appalachia. They say yens. That's right. Yens is a thing there. That's right. West Coast does not know yens. Midwest <laughs> does not know yens. It's not y'all. It, no, it it's is yen. not y'all. It is. It is not your southern collective no. y'all. No, th- th- this is Yins. some hillbilly type Appalachian vibe. That's right. It's not quite pigeon. Um, I don't know what to call it. Um, the the, the I think the name of the accent is um, Steelers. Go Steelers. It's a Steeler accent. There you go. <laughs> but. Yeah, well, take for example, Joe Biden was actually uh, going to give a press conference about his infrastructure bill or uh, plan or whatever. At his what? One of these bridges that was going to be replaced in Pittsburgh, mm-hmm. and literally was that the one as, that collapsed? Uh, uh, yes, a, as a Pittsburgh city bus with passengers was driving over this actual bridge. About literally the day before, or yeah. maybe earlier in the day of, it was like twenty four hours collapsed. before or something. And so they had to move their press conference somewhere else. Yep. It it the bus killed the photo op. It was it was uh, one of the highlights of the Brandon regime, honestly. Yeah. And then there was the other one. Wait, was that? No, that wasn't Brandon. It was uh, it was the other guy. Uh, the Orange Beast, where they had the oh Cheeto Dick, yeah, where they had the uh, the press conference in it was like a parking lot of uh, I, don't, I don't fucking remember, and then it turns out there was like a dead body or something uh, on the lot the whole time. Oh wow, yeah, I gotta say my favorite Trump press conference of all time still to this day is when he was down in Puerto Rico. Oh. Doing some fact check that we're going to call it <laughs> hurricane relief. I, be- I believe it was in response to Hurricane Maria. 
Um, yeah, or I don't know. There's been so many. Actually, there's been more than one to hit Dorian and others. But um, so maybe it was Hurricane Dorian. I don't know. Anyways, um, I'll look it up. But uh, the point being, Trump's got this like picnic table set up, and there's like rolls of um, paper towels and toilet paper and other stuff on it. And apparently there are some Puerto Ricanos, you know, there's some Boricuas in, in the room. Mm -hmm. And so Trump, who's there to help distribute relief, picks them up and, and starts basketball shooting rolls of fucking toilet paper you know, like it's a rave, like you're throwing T-shirts to the crowd. You know what I'm saying? But but doing it with with the follow through, right? You know what I'm saying? Right. Like really, like, like he's doing like, free throws. Like, yeah, like like you're shooting wads into the wastebasket, but you're trying to hit the wastebasket from right. ten feet because you don't want to get out of your swivel office chair. Right. Um. Yeah. And yeah, that that's what I remember. Now I got. Now I got to find out. Was it Dorian or Maria? Let's Probably see. Maria. I, I bet I can find that on. Google. I bet it was Sorry. Maria. I don't remember Dorian, but I remember Maria. Trump throws paper towels in Puerto Rico. Blam! Trump throws paper towels in the crowd in Puerto Rico. So, October fourth, twenty seventeen. Damn. Oh Doesn't wow! Say what there storm it, is. it was. Uh, San Juan pummeled. All right, here it is. Guardian News. First tribute. Uh, so the U.S. president and first lady visited disaster relief center at Calvary Chapel outside San Juan, Puerto Rico, on Tuesday, where Trump throws paper towels into the crowd. Donald Trump's first visit to U.S. territory since it was pummeled by a Category Four hurricane nearly two weeks ago. Yeah, and the name of the hurricane was? God damn it, man. All right. Puerto Rico. But must not have been important enough to record. Well, that's what you call journalism. Yeah. When you Yay, talk about journalism. the hurricane relief, but you don't name the hurricane. Oh, well, exactly. I said it was Hurricane Maria. Let's see if it. Yes, Hurricane Maria. Yeah, that's what I made said. Made landfall October second, twenty seventeen. And I wasn't even paying attention to the news then. Yes. And I yes. got it right. Yes. Damn, I'm good. It was Maria. I was right in the uh, in the <laughs> the Caribbean with the cyclone. Yeah, that's right. Hurricane Maria also did some damage to Little St. James Island. Yeah. For which repairs were There's made. There's only by, five uh, people Jeffrey in the Epstein. audience that got my clue joke there. <laughs> That's all right. What if, up, Shelly? If you <laughs> laughed, you get a bonus point. All right. Well, and we've I got made it. Made it to the end. I got one cigarette left, but we've Damn. only got. 15 minutes before uh, 15, we get this plane yeah. on the ground and then we get one of the landing gear to retract because you know if you put one of the wings on the tarmac yeah it'll end up like that it's plane easier in for people to just slide down the wing to that's get right. out the window that's right one one of the many adventures in aviation that happened in the last 24 hours which again is why i ask anybody getting on a plane ever again at this point i'm probably not is, Shelly, who's in the chat now, Shelly was just talking about the fact that she don't see herself getting on no plane. But it was for different reasons. Well, because, I mean, you know, I didn't... The, 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 the apprehension about the whole security oh, that was nothing, process. That you was know, nothing. And, and, am I going to have to go through one of those Michael Chertoff rapist scan machines or how hard am I going to get Yes, broke? you do have to go through the Michael Chertoff machine. That that sucks. 
Uh, and then uh, you get molested uh, by a totally not gay TSA agent. Uh, they're they're going to grab your, your naughty bits and, you know, you're probably but, not going to like it. To be fair, if you're not familiar with what TSA stands for, I did explain in the telegram earlier, it stands for tickle some ass. Yeah. So just laugh. Yeah. You're being tickled. Yeah. Anyway. It's funny, then, though. You know, some of them know, like, how awful what they're doing is. So they're just like, their heart's not in it. And they're just like, all right, I'm wave the wand. We're good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you can tell the wand. Yeah. And, and my pro tip is when, whenever you say, you know, you can either do the rapist scan or do the pat down. But if you go through the rapist scan, you get pat down anyway. So I do both. Um, but I always take one of those microwave bags of popcorn, you know, why with me. Because normally, if I go through the rapist scan, by the time I get on board, because they don't hand out peanuts or anything on, on the short pop flight, um, and, uh, you know, and so I'm just left with peanuts envy. And, but I've got the half pop popcorn bag, thanks to the Michael Chertoff rapist scan, that just dosed me up with all kinds of microwaves um, in order to basically strip my clothes down and have naked shots of the Yona chunk. Because, you know, yeah. they want more red Which meat. Which they do then diet. share around as well. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. I think that yeah, was actually part person. of the legislation. That they have I mean, rights dude, to all of the, the photos. If you're and, working for a branch of the government that's literally called Tickle Some Ass, you're definitely yeah. into some perp shit. Yeah. I think. And butt stuff, obviously. Well, you know their motto. Starts with butt stuff. Yeah, you know their motto, right, Yona? It's not gay if it's TSA. That's right. Because it's for humor. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm not groping your anus because I'm trying to channel my inner P. Diddy. It's to make you laugh. Take some ass. But no, I'm, I'm serious. I think we are being discouraged from air travel. Well, uh... Planes falling apart, uh -huh. planes landing on the nose Psycho in the middle passengers. of the Indian Ocean. Have we, have we seen or... any, any psychotic passengers in the last six months? We have. The answer is yes. Oh, oh, I wasn't paying attention. Oh, dude, oh. The, you can, they're always on social media. You can find them. Oh, yeah. Well, like the last time I saw a really cool video like that, it was actually on, maybe it was a TikTok video that was shared to YouTube or something. But anyways, there was this dude who was sitting behind Mike Tyson on an airplane. And for some reason, let's say he was drunk. Definitely going to say he was drunk. I think drunk. he was, yeah. I think that, yeah, he was drunk. He decided to just fuck with Mike Tyson. Which is a bad kept, move. Kept fucking with Mike Tyson. And he fucked around. And, and he found out. Um, and then he found out. Um, and it was very quick. Very quick. And um, it started with him standing up. And thanks to Mike Tyson, he got sat the fuck down. And then and, just kind of looked the very rest stupid of the plane as parts of his face, all kinds of different parts of his face began to grow and expand. <laughs> and he just kind of looked there and sulked as his whole face began to just swell and throb. Yeah, because apparently he was, he was being a dick to everybody else on the plane, too. Yeah. And they all cheered uh, yeah, when, everyone when he cheered. got knocked the fuck out. It, it took maybe, maybe four seconds. Yeah. But, he, you know, he warned him before. Before the whole four-second flurry, Mike warned him. That's right. He's, if this goes too far. And, and it did. Speaking of Tyson. Yeah. 
Did you know that Tyson Chicken is blending in the bioengineered ingredients on all of their breading for their chicky nuggies? Oh, really? And they're deciding, they're looking into launching some breaded other nuggies. Interesting. Some some impossible nuggies. Well, I with, did with hear different types of um, protein. Oh, nice. Maybe even some chitin. Maybe even some, some cricket flour. Right. Well, I did hear that they're going to make a change to the packaging where now, I guess, the, the FDA is going to allow <clears throat> that instead of doing your full uh, ingredient list on the packaging, what you can do, and it's like if you have... Uh, and don't quote me on these numbers, but it's something like this. It's like if you have more than 12 ingredients in your product, your food product, and uh, at least three of those ingredients are what they would term bioengineered, then instead of listing all of that on the packaging, which you know it can get expensive because you get into long lists and you got all these multi-syllable words and... Right. Like, it gets expensive real quick, right? Now, they can just put a QR code on the packaging, and it's on you to go and look up what the hell's in that food before you eat it. See, I've been, I've been warning people for a long time. You want to keep up on your tramp stamp game and stay totally literate in um, sex markings because every package has their sexy marking. You could call it a barcode, but... Um, just leads to a stripper pole. But if you can't read the QR code, you better get an app for that. I mean, you want to know what you're fucking with when you grab it with both hands. Well, Maybe, you know, before you shovel that down your gullet, you might want to know, Jesse Smollett. I'm just saying. Well, I, I think maybe it would be an indication that you probably don't want to put your hands on it or put it in your mouth, let alone in your stomach. I mean, if, if, if I look down and I read a tramp stamp that says herpes, whoa, whoa that, that's like a mm. do not enter sign on a freeway ramp, yeah. buddy. Probably better skirt, not to dip skirt, skirt. into that well. Skirt, skirt. Yeah. I, I, I don't need that. I don't need that. Well, of course, you know, we do need to remind everyone uh, that Liberty Radio will not be on the air tomorrow night. Folks, no Saturday night broadcast for us this week. Uh, we're going to be hanging out with some other friends and uh, taking the night off. So feel free to dig into the back catalog if you miss us that much. Or, you know, come hang out where we're hanging out. You can do it for one night. It's not going to kill you. Yona's going to be there. You can get some more Hopefully. of the Yona as the Yona struggles for oxygen. You know, I made a um, I made a song from a really old training video. I think it was from Pan American Airlines. A training video for their um, Oh my god, I think I remember that. Stewardesses. Yeah, air stewardesses training video for Pan American Airlines where they're talking about, I'm sorry, sir, you need to put your cigarette out. Um, or smoking is, is starts at row 24 or something. And I called that song row AK-47 or something. I don't know. Um, I never released that song. But in that song, like to write the lyrics, I wrote down on the back of an envelope from some piece of junk mail the top 50 um, U.S. defense contractors. <laughs> and so then for the lyrics, I had to start going through the list. You know, Boeing, Northrop Grumman, Raytheon. <laughs> General Dynamics, just all all down through this whole list. Um, 
never released that either. I, I should go back and fuck with that now that I'm reminded of that. You should. That 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 you know I that's one of the only aviation centered songs I have really. I haven't really talked much about that. I I I keep writing songs about um like medical stuff just in some general way like like uh seems like every other song uh well practically every song that i write with uh dead fella and dr dennis and them all this dark stuff about like global conspiracy and propaganda and medical fuckery it's just all very dark stuff but but true and accurate to be fair hmm. it's really dark like well we 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 live in dark times so you know it's an accurate reflection of reality but uh who's kidding who drizzle <laughs> reality bites fantasy is awesome hmm. more goggles plate yeah by the way i just dropped the uh link for the new prisoners rumble channel in the live stream chat for anyone that's not already subscribed. Uh, if you are listening to the replay on Odyssey, uh, you can access the live stream chat for that. And if I remember in the morning, I might actually even put it in the replay notes. You'll oh, just have to, to check to find out if that happened. Uh, the TV that's used downstairs that the kids watch their kitty stuff on is through the Roku app. Uh, and for those that are not fluent in uh, Nihongo, or uh, Japanese, as it were, um, you know, if, if you start counting from one to ten, Ichini, San, Shi, Go, Roku. Oh, what? Six. Roku. Six. Ro Roku, Chichi, Hachi, Chichi, Chichi. Right. Counting one to ten. But Roku means six. And turns out you can... Catch six and friends at the new prisoners on Rumble using the Roku, Roku. app. Wow! See what I did there? That's crazy. All together with a bow. So they named I with this man. They named I it after. Man. They named it after six. Yes, but in Japanese. But why Japanese? Because it's electronics. Because we're all turning Japanese. I really think so. Hmm. <laughs> that was a long way to go for a joke, man. That was a long way to go. I think the it Tokyo paid off. Tokyo and though. back. I think it paid off. Tokyo and back. Hey, yeah. don't eat the tuna. They they breed at Fukushima. Ooh, ooh, I'm just ooh. saying. I heard I heard uh, James Evan Pilato <laughs> uh, say this morning that he's thinking about taking time off and uh, doing some more interviews. Yeah, yeah. I bet you might be able to snag an interview with him. Yeah, that'd be wild. We can talk about some Westy Virginia stuff. There you go. I'll have to get. I'll definitely have to bring tutors for that interview. Which for for the uninitiated, um, tutors is like Bob Evans, only it's edible. You know your basic country fare. You know, uh, do I really have to go through the list? You know, beans and know. cornbread. I, yeah, yeah, biscuits and gravy. Um, Lots of moist foods. Yeah. Turbo moist. Lots of lots of bread and uh butter potatoes and, and butter, yeah. <clears throat> Just um cholesterol fest. Yeah. Nothing wrong cholesterol with Cholesterol fest for all. There you go. It's a cholesterol fest for all. Mmm. Probably my favorite thing of all. They can be eaten any time, day or night. Those fried little fucking hash brown patties. Oh you yeah. You never know what kind of geometry are you're going to get. Are you going to get the isosceles triangle? Right? Is it going to have a right angle, or is it going to be like home plate? Or or are they feeling generous? Are you going to get the whole fucking rectangle? But it's not a true rectangle because the corners have been rounded on it, and. It, they're not even, they're, it's like a parallelogram, but they're scanned. So it's like a rhombus, but with rounded corners. But on some of them, the corners are like flipped. 
so they're not rounded. So in that case, it's got 12 sides, which would make it a dodecahedron. You know, it's just potatoes that's been fried in oil. That's basically. right. That's right. And it's tasty. That's why I like it. Before we get Man. out of here, ladies ketchup. and gentlemen. Ketchup, uh, don't fall behind. That's right. Uh, don't forget, tune in tomorrow night to the new Prisoners channel on Rumble. Uh, you'll find myself and Yona there and, and possibly some other folks as well. It's kind of like uh, a, a Hollywood stars type of thing is what you know. Big was H me the asked in the chat, if you have three Roku's, does it unlock some six, six, six powers? Well, in fact, if you have three Roku's that translates as to having six dragon balls, which means you unlock Goku power at that point. I don't know what that means. Dragon Ball Z rules. Anyway, ask master Roshi. He can confirm. Yeah. And then uh, don't forget on Monday, March 18th, I'm going to be sitting down with uh, the one and only Charlie Robinson of the Macro Aggressions podcast. That's going to be fun. And then, of course, uh, we'll, we'll be live streaming the end of the world on April 8th at the time that it happens, which I think in my neck of the woods is like noon to three. Yeah. Uh, but we'll be live on the air. Uh, for every second of it, don't forget to mark it down on your calendar. Uh, I don't know. We've got like maybe 20, 30 seconds left, Yona. What What do you need to uh, let people know about? I would love to see a Hurricane Otis happen, but on the West Coast, further up. Because if they can get it to happen in Acapulco, they can get it to happen in San Francisco. So like, a Hurricane Otis, like ripping through the Golden Gate Bridge while the Cal Dot, you know, the Department of Transportation, because they got cameras on the on the Golden Gate Bridge at all yeah. times. And so just the camera shot of uh, Hurricane Otis, you know, building, stripping, fucking, you know, um, I'm going to say about 280 to 300 kilometer per hour winds. Um, because you know, fuck Imperial. Yeah, we're going with kilometers, and it's still doing damage. But you know, when when you see that it's 160 kilometers an hour, which is 100 miles an hour, but 160 kilometers an hour, that's so fast you're confused. 